You don't expect me to haul this stuff around till you find a place. Oh, I'm afraid that would be too expensive. I hadn't expected so much trouble. I'm not thinking of the expense. I'm thinking of the horse. He's a pretty old man. Why can't you find the place? Because they either want too much money or they don't want children. Have you got any children? Uh, no. Then what are you talking about? I expect a baby. Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> Takes a lot of courage, young woman. I know. Took care of Frida here every time she had a cold. Fire. He's a good breeder. You look all right, too. Uh, what kind of place do you want? A cheap place. Uh, would you uh, climb a ladder to get to it? Oh, I'd do even more. I'd jump on it. Over my furniture shop, I got a place. Mm -hmm. A big room and a uh, bed and uh, stove there, too. I could let you have it for, uh, for uh, 30 marks a month. 30? Yes, providing you take your uh, baby clip from me. I got an old one which I can uh, rebuild and paint fresh. I could let you have it for um, 15 marks. If you buy it, I'll uh, reduce the rent to 20 marks a month. Being a landlord is, is just a sideline. Furniture is my business. Is it a deal? Oh, yes. Providing you let me give you 20 marks for the baby crib and 15 marks a month for the rent. Is that a deal? Yes, sir. I like that even better. <laughs> but I tell you something, young lady. I'm making a lot of profit on that baby crib. <laughs> Be careful, Limshin. Well, why you rented a place like this, I don't know. Now, don't go until you've seen it. Yeah. On your left, we have a stove. Not big enough to cook much on, but we can't afford much, so big enough. Now, on your right, according to her put piece, is a Napoleon bed. Now, if you look at it closely, you will see why Napoleon slept so often in a chair. <laughs> Now, this, according to her foot priest, is a gateway to heaven because it leads directly to the sky. Roof garden and orchestra, all for 15 marks a month. Isn't that cheap, darling? I think it's horrible, Lynchon. It's like a stable, a pig pen. No, I mean it. I hate it. music, dear? No. Not particularly. You should. Why? Because that's a waltz we could hear them playing in the pavilion. That night we were on the beach together. First night. Oh, darling, if I should die, have it played for me again. I mean, why do you speak of death? They still love me. Oh, I do. I do. That's why I'm beginning to hate the whole world. Because you love me? Oh, yes. What have we done to life that we should be mistreated? We met, we loved, we married, we're going to have a child. That's paying the full price for the privilege of living. And for that, we can stand out here and listen to that music as, as it plays for someone else to dance to and say how wonderful it all is. But it isn't wonderful. It isn't. It's rotten. It's unfair. Darling, you're talking just like the man in the street. Yes. Yes, I am. And this morning, I found a knife in my hand. Oh, Lynchon, take care of me, please. What were his totals last month? I've sent him on to 45 marks. Yes, and the month before to 61. Yeah. And but one sale so far for this month. Oh. Now, Pinneberg, I advise you to bring up your totals immediately and avoid dismissal. That's all.
You in trouble here, Pinneberg? A little. Schluter, the screen actor. Oh. Why not let him take his choice? Hmm? All right. Good afternoon, young man. Good afternoon. May I ask, are you the possessor of a lively fancy? Oh, fancy goods, they're on the second floor. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. What I really meant was, for example, look at that sack of trousers. Could you imagine a goldfish perched there, singing? Not very well, sir. Have you ever heard a goldfish sing? No, sir. It is well. If ever you do, begin to worry. Uh, how can I serve you? Sir. Why should one man serve another? Yet, after all, it is the custom, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Now, supposing a young man were to come in from, let us say, the wrong side of the town, and being flush, should want a complete outfit, could you tell me the sort of things he would be likely to choose? You mean more than one suit? Perhaps a dozen. Oh. But before you show me these things, I want you to get this picture firmly fixed in your mind. When the young man comes in through that door, this is what he will look like. Oh, that's wonderful, Herr Schluter. I mean, you know me, then? Oh, yes. I, well, I've seen you on the screen. Ah. What was the picture? Um, I can't recall the name. But you were a cashier in a bank, and, and you stole money? Ah, I remember. My wife was ill, and my child was dying. Yes. Tell me, which part of the picture did you like best? Oh, where you stole the money. I liked your expression on your face when you put the bundles of it into a satchel. Ah, like this, you mean? Yeah, yeah, it's just like that. It seems so real. You seem to need it so badly. It, it, don't laugh. It was... I felt as if I were doing it myself. The voice of the people. I am honored. Oh. Now show me, uh, show the young man from the wrong side of the town your suits. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, he's shown him everything in the store. Excellent, young man. All your things are excellent. <laughs> and what shall I put on your account, Herr Schlitter? Account? Oh, yes. My dear young fellow, I'm not buying any of these things. You see, in my next picture, I play a young man from the wrong side of town. And I wanted to get a few ideas. Oh. Well, for heaven's sake, don't look so upset about it. I'll send you a card for my next first night. You are married? I'll send you two cards. Herr Schlitter, please, buy something. You have so much money. If you go away now, they'll think it's my fault and I'll be dismissed. <laughs> but don't be absurd. I can't buy all these things just to please you. Well, I'm like the bank clerk you played on the screen, Herr Schlitter. My wife, too. She's ill and we expect a child. <laughs> but my good fellow, those are your affairs, not mine. Then do it for my sake. I've been serving you for two hours. I I've shown you everything I can think of, at least by one suit. This one. It's pure Cheviot. It'll wear forever. Forever? Can you imagine me living in a thing like that forever? <laughs> Besides, I'm getting tired. Please, Herr Schlitter. There's a quarter fixed for us by the firm. And unless we make it, we're dismissed. Oh, I'm behind many marks. Please, please buy something. Take your hands off me. If you please. Uh, my name is Lehman. I'm the general manager. I am Franz Schruter, the actor. You have very odd assistants here. They assault your customers to make them buy. This young man says he's forced to meet his quota. Blackmail, don't you think? Herr Pinnemerk, against the wishes of Herr Spanfus, I gave you another chance. But now you are dismissed. Go at once to the personnel department and get your papers. What he told you about the quota is quite false. Why, only a little while ago I told him, if you couldn't reach it, not to even worry. Uh, tell me, Herr Sluter, uh, what is your next picture? <laughs> he's going to play a poor young man. <laughs> a poor young man from the wrong side of town. <laughs> All right, hey, I'm dressed. Dear lady, you're beautiful. <laughs> You're charming. You're magnificent. Oh, well, hands like it, do you think? Sweet child, is your husband blind? How could he look at you and not like you? 
Oh, but you might not like the idea of your giving me dresses and flowers and candy. Well, is it my fault if the police unceremoniously turn up at Mia Pinneberg's while Ada and Gretchen are doing a... Uh, in their... Sweet darling, nothing less. And the poor girl's dragged out, while I absentmindedly slip through the side window with both their dresses and wraps, figuring one of them might fit you. <laughs> and Ada's does. But hey, I mean, this dress has never been worn. It's new. No. Oh, wear it just for tonight. I loan it to you. In fact, it was I gave it to Ida. But we won't mention that. Mia Pinneberg might not like it. Hey, Jochen, you're such an awful liar. <laughs> and you are such a lovely woman. <laughs> Maybe I'd better wait here. No, I'll be surprised enough at first. Your turn comes next. Come, come, hurry. Ghost, is something wrong? Yeah. I've been discharged. I've lost my job. I... Where is Lemshin? Young man, behold a gracious queen. Her Majesty is extremely happy tonight and in no mood for affairs of state. Oh, do you like me? Beautiful, Lemshin. You may kiss my hand. <laughs> and now we will escort Her Majesty to some popular cafe where she may enjoy good food, old wine, and excellent music. Oh, no. Not tonight, Jochen. Oh, yes, dear. Please, tonight. Hey, Jochen wants us to go. We haven't any money, Lemshin. No, I, I don't want to go anywhere tonight. My dear fellow. Jachmann's guest needs no money. Oh, won't you go? Hey, Jachmann has brought this beautiful dress just for me to wear tonight. It may be my last chance to go out, and I do so want to go. Very expensive. Hey, Kranz? Kranz? Jachmann. I'd like to see you for a moment. <laughs> Pardon, Hans. Do you mind? Well, not if you don't stay too long. It will seem long, sweet lady. <laughs> if it's only a moment. <laughs> Do you always sing on your way to jail, Yuckman? No, only when I'm happy. <laughs> You're going to get five years, do you realize that? Yes, sure. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Do I look silly? Well, I was Santa Claus tonight. You? Yes, I. Dissipated old Yachtman. Brought a bag full of happiness 
to an angel. That's why I can sing. Bring us some more wine, please. Where do you suppose the Achman's gone? He'll be back, dear. But it's an hour now. Ninety marks. What do we do? I'd better speak to the management. We can't just go on ordering. Will they mind very much, do you think? No, they may just put us in jail, that's all. Now, Finnebert? Yes, sir? This envelope just came for you by messenger. Please pardon my bad manners and drink another bottle of wine to Her Majesty the Queen for me, Yachman. Huh. Still another bottle of wine, waiter. Please. He says to drink this to you, Lemshin. No. Hmm? To Yachman. For you, freedom. You are jealous. Jealous of Frau Pinnifer. You don't think anybody but you has the right to have children. Hoi Nien Su. Smells good, I put these. Smells good. It is good. I don't know how I'll ever repay you. Oh, don't you bother about it. But I do. I worry about the rent, too. We owe you five months now. Your husband is still out of work, isn't he? Yes, he tries so hard he goes out early every morning. Yeah. Have some of this while it's hot. Mm. Oh, I bet you were a wonderful husband, Herr Putbreeze. Yes, I would have been if I ever had a wife. That's the best onion soup I ever tasted. Weren't you ever in love? Sure. I've probably been refused by more women than any ten men living. <laughs> well, they were silly. Sure. That's what I figured. <laughs> I guess there isn't much sex appeal in just being able to cook. Even when I was in the army, as soon as the girls found out I was a chef, the uniform didn't do me a bit of good. <laughs> oh, you like my dressing table, don't you? Nice piece of furniture. Mm. I told you you could have it on account of the rent. Yes, I know, but uh, I don't like trading rent for things. Furniture is my business. I tell you what I will do. I'll swap you a sofa, a Morris chair, and a three-drawer chest for it. Is it a deal? I don't need a modest chair and a chest of drawers. But I'll tell you what. Hans is stopping at the insurance office today to see about the warranty money. And if he doesn't get it, I'll sell it to you for enough to go to the hospital. I should be there now, you know. How much did you pay for it? 130 marks. Of course, it's second hand now, but it should be worth... Seventy. Yeah, maybe. Sure. Maybe even seventy-five. I tell you what I will do. I'll give you eighty for it. A and throw in the sofa and the chest of drawers. Is it a deal? Yes. If you'll take out part of the money for the rent. No, 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 no. I don't want to mix up my furniture business with my renting business. And besides, I'm pretty smart. The reason why I'm giving you the sofa and the chest of drawers is just to have some security for the rent. Sure you don't want any more soup? Mm -hmm. Not now, thank you. All right. I'll put some fire under it to keep it warm for you. I'll be seeing you later. Goodbye for a while. Goodbye, I'll put please. Put Breeze, come back, will you please? Put Breeze. 
I'm Johannes Pinneberg, number 666867. Again? Yes, we haven't received that confinement commitment yet. Uh, when was the child born? I'm waiting for the money to send my wife to the hospital. Have you your membership card? Yes. Yes, you asked me that every day for a week now there. And the birth certificate? I can scarcely have a birth certificate until my baby's born. Well, exactly what do you want? What? The regulations call for the birth certificate before the confinement check is issued. Yesterday you told me the check was mailed. Have you sent us your claim in writing? Yes, I, yes, over two weeks ago when you told me to. Uh, just a moment. Your claim has been dealt with by mail. When? Yesterday. The money wasn't there this morning. Well, I, I can't help that. Well, you've got to help it. I'm entitled to it. Look here. If I don't find that money at home, I'll be back. Well, I'll give will you... Will you please look that up? Yes. <clears throat> Is Herr Halbert in? Won't you hear before? Yes, yes, but Herr Halbert wasn't in. I told you then. Herr Halbert had moved and left no address. Yes, I remember that, but I thought maybe he'd come back. No. Herr Halbert has left Germany. Left Germany? Yes, for Holland. He has relatives in Amsterdam, you know. Oh, no, I don't know. So he's left Germany. Didn't know him very long, but liked him very much. Has he left for good? For good or bad? He's gone. <laughs> Coming, comrade? Where? The meeting. There's a message in it for you. A message from a great leader. Will he show me where to find the money to take my wife to the hospital? He'll show you why you shouldn't need any money to send your wife to the hospital. Come on. Oh. Where's your wife? They killed her. Who? They, they, the ones we're against. She's dead. Died in these arms. It'd have been better for her if you'd waited to see Dr. Cezanne. Shoved me off the sidewalk. Knocked me down into the gutter. I... I'm so ashamed. You aren't ashamed of your baby, are you? It's here. I got the doctor for her. Nothing new to me. <clears throat> Been through it five times with Frida. Boy. 
poor little fellow. <laughs> what now? will drown out all the voices in the streets. And instead of just me clinging to you, we'll have both of us. And we'll always have to let us share with you, even if it's only poverty. Now you'll meet my baby. Baby? He's the prettiest baby in the world. He's like you, Hilbert. He's a nudist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where have you been? They told me you left for good. Yes, yes, for very good. I'm an employer now. No, Hilbert. Yes, Finneberg in Amsterdam. No, Hilbert. Yes, Finneberg, and I've come to hire you. No, Hilbert. Yes, and maybe your son. No, Hilbert. <laughs> 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 